would be the first misconception misconception in architecture? I would say I, I, I'm, I, I love this because I'm the first one until I met you and many other architects that I was thinking that, for example, um, architects are builders. So you go to the building and you are there. And, and then I found out that it's not like that, is it, isn't it? Actually, no. Not a... <laughs> okay, yes. what do you do? Uh, there are a few misconceptions. Uh, first one, like architects only design buildings. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes mm -hmm. even farther than that, architects only drew plans or drawings or we only draw. Oh yeah, you are drawers and painters and that's it. Exactly. And farther from the truth, we architects and other professionals in, in our industry, we need to look at the whole uh, process of uh, building or the construction of a whole building, what we call a project that will go from uh, starting meetings with the clients that they have um, a building or they have a, a lot that they want to build a, a building and we have to go through uh, proposals, designing. We also have to go through documentation, uh, meetings with city hall and bylaws and different like uh, laws that we need to check in, to make sure the building has to be in a certain way, certain height, square okay. meters or square footage. And then we have to do a comprehensive projects that have to sometimes incorporate like uh, other engineers or other like technical architects and produce drawings uh, as we usually misunderstood we only do drawing but later we have to ensure and coordinate with people who are going to do like general contractor usually is the term general contractor is the one who is in charge of taking the project and building it and okay, so this not, whole not process. Okay, are, the whole process. Not like because sometimes I think we have that misconception, as you say, that you see the picture and then you say, "Oh, it's beautiful," and it's it's like, okay, it's more it's more than that. I mean, exactly. there are some studies, uh, there are some measures, there are some many other things that we will talk about it that need to be taken into account. But um, if I'm not wrong, there, are, um, I mean, the same as it happens in other professions. Um, if I'm not wrong. Uh, there are many different specialities, like uh, some of them for buildings, some of them for roads, some of them for etc. Yeah. Or, um, or not. That's the main difference between an architect in Spain and an architect, for example, in North America. Uh, okay. Canada and United States are pretty much the same in terms of the profession, the career of uh, architecture. And in Spain, the um, Education is focused on more like a global um, architect that takes from we are um, skilled to do structural design, to do drawings, to do construction, to do everything. But it, the, the main difference, for example, with North America, in North America, the the architects they do architectural design, they more okay. like the the shape of the building, the the interior design, and then they need to engage other engineers, like a structural engineer, um, mechanical, electrical, plumbing engineer, and other types of engineers, depending on the project, the size, the complexity. But usually they need to engage other architects. They cannot do everything by themselves. In Spain, Spain. Likely, likely, we can outsource, and they can help us if we have a big project or whatever, but we can do by ourselves everything. okay you can manage the whole project if you want you can look for in fact most of the times you will have to to find out or some things but yeah. uh, but you can do it on your own another misconception that you already were talking about and i think that as you say it's different in the in the us or canada etc it is that when i'm thinking about an architect i can visualize a big table with like yeah, your drawings and that's it. Um, is there any team behind? Is it necessary? Is it not? Because or you just hand out the 
the drawing or I mean, do you need any team? Uh, or do you need any other professionals? What do you do yeah. after it is that dropped? This career has evolved quite a lot. Usually, we'll say like 20 years ago on, on earlier, the architects usually, they don't use any computer. They was everything draw by hand. And they, that's why you see those big tables that they were drawing everything by hand. You don't draw by hand anymore. We do. Yeah. We do You're sketches. Conception. We oh, do. We do sketches, and we always drawing is the the first part of any project because it's the easiest way to translate what's in your mind to the paper to the reality. Okay. So okay. drawing, sketching, doing by hand, even like sometimes like little uh, like small models or doing a class, anything can help you to start working on that. Sometimes the drawing itself helps you like a like another then, tool so to be able to AutoCAD work. Or any other program. Yes. And back then when you do everything by hand, imagine for example you are doing an office building and you okay. do a floor plan and you draw everything and then the client comes and say like no uh, we need a new staircase or this or the planning department says like no we need to this the hallway needs to be a meter uh, or two meters wide, for example. Okay. So making changes on a drawing require a lot of manpower. We need a lot of people to draw and change everything. So back then, uh, architect oil firms used to be um, quite large because you need a lot of people to draw. Right now, thanks to computer uh, computers and like, first we move into CAD, AutoCAD, and, and so softwares like that. That is the digital version of drawing, and then we move to software kind of like Beam, Revit. Is a Revit is a kind of big software. Beam is a, a different, like a next level on on designing and, and creating. Mm -hmm. you, you basically replicate the building in three in digi digitally okay and that allows us to be more lean not as much as any in the industry you can uh, you need less people or you can take more projects but usually um, architects when they start unless they come from a family they have already a, a firm or something if you start from scratch Usually you start small and then maybe just by yourself or you have a partner and then you maybe grow slowly. And there are offices that, that just maybe just one professional, maybe there are a small team of five to 10 people. And there are also firms. I, I work in one of them in Canada, a corporation that is uh, thousands of people. They have offices everywhere in the planet. And okay. they are like, for example, you have, I, I am, Personally, I work in Perkins and Will, but you have uh, Norman Foster, for example, is a very famous architect, and okay. he has one of the, the largest firms. Foster, for example, he not only do architecture, but he takes also urban planning and and has like many specialities beyond what it usually. With the last misconception that it's two in one. Imagine I'm I want to well of course if I want to get a home I will go I will hire you. So you. let's say this is not a hypothetical thing. <laughs> okay. Um it's the time of the you know we'll have the house of our dream. My okay. dream the house. Okay. Yes. And I have a very clear idea. That very clear idea comes from Pinterest of course. Of because course. they are, of course, I mean, all our wonderful ideas come from even, Pinterest. Even for us, we use Pinterest sometimes to check all the ideas. Oh, but I would I, I would go, even I would show you the picture and I would say, look, yeah. please. And maybe you are telling me uh, that's artificial intelligence that can never exist in the reality. But I would say, no, 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 I want that. So the first thing is, um, first, are we very intoxicated about uh, with this kind of beautiful buildings or images that social media show us and many of them the reality is that it's artificial intelligence secondly 
can you make absolutely everything I am asking for for my house? Or we start with that. We'll start can with that. Make, can you make it uh, everything and I, I'm dreaming about, or there are some limits? That's kind of connected what we were talking about before, about clients and their agenda and what they want. Because we try to accommodate as much as possible because at the end of the day, especially if it's a home, their home, yeah. where they're going to live and they're going to spend vast majority of their money, of their income yeah. during their whole life, they're going to spend yeah. it here. You cannot just ignore and say, no, no, I my, my designs are this. And if you want to live in this house, good. If not, go to an next architect. Yeah. They are archi yes, there are architects like that. But others, architects, we try to accommodate as much as possible the needs of the That's client because you usually... You say it's your home. It's not a house. It's your yes. home. So you need, it to, you need to 